Good morning, Father's Faithful Sunday School class. I have missed you this week, but I am thankful for the prayers that you've prayed for my family. I know that you've had some special requests, and I've prayed for those too. And I just pray that we'll be together soon so we can pray together. Um, I thank you for your support. I thank you for tuning in today. I hope that we're able to see each other at church uh, this Sunday too, but I still wanted us to have time for a Sunday school lesson, so thank you for joining me today. I read a story this week about a man and his watch. It was actually a story about the days before we had refrigeration. Uh, people used an ice house, and those ice houses were built with really thick walls and a sturdy door and no windows and in the winter time when the streams and the rivers froze over people would go down to the river and they would chop big pieces of ice and bring them up and put them in their ice houses and cover those blocks of ice with sawdust and sometimes it would last all the way till summer. Well, there was a man who had been working in the ice house and he lost his very, very valuable watch and he looked for his watch for hours and hours and he couldn't find his watch in the ice house and he called his friends in and he asked them to look too and they searched and searched but they couldn't find the watch the next day a little boy slipped into the ice house about noontime he closed the door and he came out just a few minutes later with the man's watch the man was absolutely amazed and he said how did you find my watch and the boy said, well, I went in and I laid down on the sawdust and I got very, very quiet and I listened. And he said, before long, I heard the ticking of your watch and that's how I found your watch. You know, today, the question is not, is God speaking to us because we know he is, but are we being still enough? Are we being quiet enough to listen. You know, for the last couple of months, we've heard lots and lots of voices. And especially this week, we've heard many, many voices. Some are loud and angry, and some are fearful and crying. Some are shouting, some are screaming, some are yelling and telling others what to do and what to think. You know, I was reminded when I read the story about the lost watch of the story of Elijah the prophet. In chapter 18 of the book of First Kings, Elijah had just experienced this tremendous victory against the prophets of Baal. He had challenged the people to choose which God they would serve, either Baal or the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, God proved his power and the people saw who the one true God was. And Elijah claimed victory for the one true God. But if you read on in chapter 19, you'll find that King Ahab, who was an evil, evil king, rushed back to tell Jezebel, his wicked, wicked wife, about everything that had happened. And the word got to Elijah that Jezebel was going to have done to Elijah just what he had done to the prophets of Baal. They were all slaughtered. And she promised that she would kill Elijah too. And Elijah was afraid. And he ran for his life. And he told the Lord that he had had enough. He even asked the Lord to take his life. But instead, God sent an angel to give him nourishment. I'd like for us to read the scripture. We're going to pick up in verse 10 of chapter 19, where the Lord comes to Elijah. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. 
Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. You know, it is true. Just like the wind, just like the earthquake, and just like the fire, God's voice can resound from the mountaintops. It can shake the foundations of the earth. But many times, it comes to us just like it came to Elijah. You know, maybe it comes to us in our quiet time at home when we're reading our Bible and having our devotions. That still, small voice spoke to me when I was reading this passage, in fact. Go back the way you came. You know, I thought about what that meant in my own life, and I thought about to my upbringing, my godly heritage. There were some tough paths to travel, but the examples of faith in God will last me into eternity. When I think about my godly heritage, I think about a story that my aunt told me years ago. My grandmother um, had a son that was older than my daddy named Jack. And Jack had a son who was four years old at the time named Stevie. And Jack and Stevie were killed in an automobile accident. Actually, a drunk driver hit them and killed them. Well, in those days, most people didn't go to funeral homes, um, but they went to their own homes for families together and for people to come and pay their respect to the families. One night, my grandmother heard a knock on her back door and she went to the back door to see who was there. She had had a lot of company that day and um, she went to the door and she didn't recognize the man, but when he said his name, she knew exactly who he was. He was a friend of my Uncle Jack's. They had worked together. And he asked my grandmother if he could come in and pay his respects uh, to the family uh, because he and my Uncle Jack were such good friends. And my aunt told me that my grandmother told him, of course he could come in, but he couldn't come in the back door. He'd have to go around and come in the front door like everybody else. He was a black man. You know, I think about the lessons that I learned from my grandmother. I think about the lessons that we talked about several weeks ago when we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. You know, my grandmother had every reason to hate that drunk driver that killed her son and her grandson. But I never saw those things in my grandmother. I saw love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. You know, I think about the lessons that she taught me as a godly Christian lady. And I think about the lessons that we should be teaching our own children today. You know, I think about that still, small voice that still wants to talk to us, that still wants to instruct us, that still wants us to do what is right and good and true. I hope that you're listening to that still, small voice today. I hope you're praying that the Lord will show you what to say and what to do. You know, our world is in turmoil, and it is up to those of us who are Christians to stand up for what is right and to be respectful of each other, to love each other, but do it in a way that the Lord would want us to do it. I pray that we can hear His voice 
in spite of the chaos in the world today. I'd like to read my column now. It is called, Can You Hear God's Voice? And I actually wrote this in 2012. I knew immediately that something was wrong. It was five in the morning and I sat straight up. Oh no, I groaned to myself. Slowly I rolled myself out of bed and stumbled my way to the bathroom. As I groped for the light switch, I realized my unsteadiness was far more than being disoriented in the dark. I also felt unbalanced and dizzy. It was my ears. I couldn't hear. My right ear was completely clogged and a dull roar had settled in. Misery, pure misery. I had groaned again. Just what I need, I thought. I was scheduled to give a read aloud exam at school that morning and I dreaded the echo of my own voice in my head as I thought about reading out loud. For that matter, I dreaded having to speak at all. Maybe it would help if I hopped on one foot and smacked the other side of my head. I used to do that after a dive at the pool and many times it did help to clear the water out. It didn't this time. I blew my nose. Nothing. I held my nose and blew again. Still no relief. The water from the shower felt good, but the amplified bellow inside my ear wasn't worth the soothing effects of the warm drizzle on my outer ear. I realized what bad shape I was in when I peeked out from behind the shower curtain to see my husband shaving with an electric razor. I couldn't hear the buzz of the razor. It was gonna be a long day. In fact, it was a long day. But in spite of the aggravation of not being able to hear, I looked forward to the relief that would surely be in store for me that afternoon. My husband had texted me to say that he had picked up the ear candles and was ready to doctor my ear as soon as I walked in from school. The school day dragged, but finally it was time to go home. I settled on the sofa anticipating immediate relief. Three candles later, my ear was just as clogged as before. The earwax drops didn't work either. Neither did the oil or the alcohol or the warm rice pack. In fact, three days later, I still couldn't hear out of my right ear. I keep saying that I couldn't hear, and that's not exactly true. I could still hear out of my left ear, but with my clogged right ear, nothing was clear. I heard roars and mixed up words and muffles. I nearly drove my poor husband crazy. In a moment of frustration, he finally resorted to the old, never mind, you can't hear me anyway. I wonder if the Lord ever feels that way with us. The world has surely been roaring some mixed up messages lately. The truth has been so muffled that it is obvious that even some Christians aren't hearing him anymore. With so many voices shouting their own thoughts and opinions, it is easy to find ourselves reeling and off balance, hanging on for dear life and completely deaf to the truth of God. And believe me, as bad as my experiences have been with my own physical hearing problems, spiritual deafness is even worse. In the name of love, we have closed our ears to the Word of God. We do not hear Jesus when He commissions us, as He commissioned Saul, the Apostle Paul, on the road to Damascus to declare the word of the Lord to Jews and Gentiles alike, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me, Acts 26, 18. That's right, that they, along with you and me, may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Jesus, and a loving hand to lead us all to the truth of Jesus Christ and his saving grace. After dealing with my clogged ear all weekend, I decided I should call my doctor. But even before that, I called on the great physician. I asked him to heal me physically, but I also asked him for wisdom and discernment so that I could clearly hear and recognize his voice and his voice alone. I also asked him to hide me behind the cross and to speak through me, to bless the words that I write and the message that I proclaim so that you can hear him too. Why else would he give me this opportunity in this forum 
except to share his word with other people. I certainly wouldn't attempt to do this in my own strength. I did go to the doctor. After irrigating and unclogging the terrible mess in my ear, I could hear again, even before I left the office. What joy, what jubilation, I could hear. In Psalm 103, the Bible says, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. And in John 10, 27, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Yes, I hear you, Lord, loud and clear. Not the garbled, mixed-up voice of the world, but the clear, distinct voice of God. And like me, if you ever want to live the blessed life that the Lord wants to lavish on you, I pray that you will hear him too. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we can be together and study your word. Father, we thank you for that still, small voice. Lord, we know that you're still speaking to us in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the noise of this world. Lord, always let us hear your voice. Let us be still and know that you're God. Lord, we thank you for a godly heritage. We thank you for those who have prayed for us. And now, Lord, we pray for those who will come behind us. Lord, we thank you for our children and our grandchildren. And we pray. Lord, that they will hear your voice, that they will know your voice, that they will obey your voice, that you will lead them and help them to serve you in a mighty way, Lord. Father, we thank you that you are faithful to us, and we pray that you would be forgiving to us too, Lord. There are so many times when we disappoint you. There are so many times when we don't do what you would have us do. We don't say what you would have us say. But Lord, I pray today that you will teach us your ways. And Lord, lead us in the paths of righteousness. Father, we thank you for your blessings and we thank you for your faithfulness. And we pray that you would just help us to glorify you in our words and in our actions. For we ask these things in your name and for your precious sake. Amen. Thank you for joining me again today. I hope to see you at church. And in the meantime, until we have Sunday school, I'll see you online. Have a good week.